know. It's been a while. How's it been for you guys? So I know I took a break from the channel for a long time, but that's mostly because, like, I didn't really know what to do. I thought about staying off YouTube for a while. Uh, I didn't really have any motivation to do it. My access to, like, video editing software was just not the same as it used to be. Now, I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to be able to do YouTube again. I'll just show you guys what I've been up to because a lot has changed. First off, as you guys can obviously see right here, that I pulled out for the beginning of the video. We got this nice 2003 Sportrax 400EX. Pretty much stock, it's got a k and filter under the seat. It's got these ODI mushroom grips. And of course, Paul ordered some sticker sheets and then he put them all over this bike because it is his, but it's a really nice bike. Funny story, when we first got this bike actually, we were riding it around one day and then we realized it would rev up and then fall back down, which is usually a symptom of a worn out crank bearing, but I went ahead and looked at the oil, it was pretty black, so I went ahead and changed the oil, I had to drain it from the crankcase and then from the external, I don't really know why it's there, it's just kind of there. Drain plug on this guy, and it's like right under here, so I had to unscrew that because it goes to an external oil cooler. I changed the oil, it ran really good. So I guess there was just some sludge or something that was built up in there. But actually, we were having clutch issues at first. It wouldn't want to go into neutral and the shift was really, really hard. So after changing the oil, that shifting problem actually kind of fixed itself, which makes me think that there was like sludge or something in between the clutch plates. But anyway, I mean, easy fix. The 350X has been doing pretty well. We just replaced the fork seals on it and got new fork boots too. These are the Daystar ones. They've held up pretty nice, but the fork seals are actually, as you can see on this side, you can see that it's leaking through again. So we got a different brand of fork seals and we're gonna have to try those out. I'll probably have to make an update on that sometime. And I don't even know where the fork seals are for it. The 200X has been done for a while actually. I had the Scorpions on there before, and they were running great, except for the fact that the bike was constantly turning to the left. So what I ended up doing is I ended up switching to these in the winter to see if I could get some more traction in the snow. But what I realized when I went back on the road is that it went straight, it didn't turn anymore. So I definitely have a warp in those old wheels, so I'll either have to get new wheels for that or just run these. If you guys don't know the story behind this engine, I basically took this engine to a good buddy of ours and we went ahead and rebuilt the entire thing, put a high compression piston in it, got new seals, new rings for the piston, and this engine runs really nice. The most recent problem I ended up having with it though was the stator worn out and it really wasn't getting much spark at all. After replacing that stator, it runs really great and I haven't had any problems with it recently. You guys might not know, I recently started really getting into music pretty heavily. I've always kind of been musical, but for these past couple of years, I've really started doing a lot of it. I ended up building this PC, actually. It's got 16 gigs of Corsair RGB Vengeance RAM. It's got an XFX Radeon card in it. It's a 580, I'm pretty sure. I have been having problems with it, though, with uh, wanting to run two monitors. It really doesn't like that. The FreeSync doesn't work with my FreeSync monitor, so that's kind of an issue. A Corsair CX750 power supply, a two terabyte hard drive, and an M.2 SSD that you can't really see, but that's in there. The chipset is a Ryzen 2600G. I got Windows to get things like Reaper initially, and to run programs like Studio One, and that just kind of made sense to me at the time. But I actually ended up getting with my composition teacher one time, and I mean, as soon as I met him, he's like, Mac is the way to go. And I tried for a while to try to emulate Macs on Windows, and it just didn't work. What I ended up getting is this 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's the highest model of the 13 inch with the touch bar and everything. And I mean, the specs really aren't that great. I can hardly even run TF2 on it at minimal settings. While it's nice, it does feature the USB-C ports. I did have to get an adapter for it. And then for that adapter, I use a hard drive to store all my sounds in. So I can run Logic basically. Um, I really like to run Logic on my computer and it would run it way better than it would on the Mac, but I mean, I guess it's nice to carry around places with me. Um, I honestly would like it to run it on my computer though, but apples. As for my current setup, 
Currently, I'm using the PreSonus AudioBox USB 96 interface. I'm using the Mackie CR3 monitors. This Rode NT1A microphone. I'm trying to get one of the desk mount stands for it. And for my headphones, I'm using the Bose QC35s. And I'm using a Yamaha MM6 for my MIDI controller and for my keyboard. And with the switch of a microphone and a really bad onboard camera from a MacBook, this is kind of an interesting vlogging setup. I might have to change the camera, of course, but I mean, it is a setup in my bedroom. Uh, tell me if you guys want to hear more music stuff, because I can definitely do that. Please like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it. I really like knowing your guys' feedback in the comments below. And subscribe if you want to see more videos from me, and tell me if you want to see some more music stuff. Um, and I'm definitely never going to use this camera again.